Hi everyone and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. This is the second episode on melee attack and this time we will finally be slaying those slimes. And now let's get started. Okay so we already have our sword here which in itself acts like a hitbox. What we need now is a way for it to hit our blue little slimes so they can finally be slayed. We could use the same area 2D as we have been using as the slime's hitbox. But I think the hurtbox should maybe have another size, so it's easier to hit them. So let's add a new area 2D to the slime scene and add a collision shape to it. I'm calling the area hurtbox and making its collision shape cover all of the slime and a bit extra. It can also be a good idea to go through all the animation frames to make sure that the slime is always completely covered by the hurt box. Now that we have our hurt box, we can then connect its area entered function to the slime script. And in the connected function, let's just set a breakpoint for now and test the game. Okay, so we collide with another area right away. In the debugger, we can click on the area object and in the inspector menu, we can hover over the path to see that what we're actually hitting is a slime. Actually, the slime is colliding with itself. To fix this, we will first check if the area the hitbox is colliding with is its own hitbox and then return if this is the case. But when we test again, we are still colliding with something right away. But it isn't our own hitbox anymore. Instead of checking all the cases in our on hurtbox area insert function, we will be using the collision layers and masks to make everything a little easier for us. First, go back to the sort scene and select the root node and then go to the collision settings. Click on the three dots to the right and select edit layer names. So far, we've made a player layer and an enemy layer, but we aren't really using them much. But now let's name layer three hitboxes. Now we can place all the hitboxes in this layer and the hurtboxes can then scan these layers. And then they will just ignore everything else. Okay, so for now at least, the sword won't be looking for any collisions because it's a hitbox. So let's set its collision layer to 3 and remove it from all the collision masks. Back in the slime scene, we need to make sure that the hurt box is then not placed in any of the layers, so none of the collision layers should be selected. But it should scan the hitbox layer, so the collision mask should have three selected. Before we test again, let's now use the print debug function to write a message each time the hurt box registers a collision. We use this to test again instead of a breakpoint. Now when we test, we can see that our onArea insert function is only triggered by the sword. If you like, you can also go change the slime's hitbox and the player's hurtbox to work with the hitbox layer. Just remember that for the player, we've also previously used the hurtbox to collect items. So you either have to add a new area 2D for that, or just have the player's hurt box scan both layer 1 and 3 for now, and then maybe change it later. Now we just need something to happen when the sword hits the slime. As a beginning, we can just remove the slime. We can do this by first removing the print debug and then using the Q3 function 
to remove the slime from the world. And now we actually have a functional sword. How cool! But we aren't really giving the player much feedback on the sword hitting and slaying the slime. So let's fix this with a little death animation. You can of course do this in a lot of ways. But here I'm just adding a new sprite to the slime and calling it death effect. And then from the ninja asset pack we're using, I'm importing the sprite sheet for the smoke effect. There is six sprites in this sprite sheet, and they are all in one single row. So I just need to set the animation 8 frames to 6. Then I go to the animation player and create a new death animation. I'm just adding the frames from the smoke sprite sheet one by one. And then I'm also setting the slime's base sprite to not be visible from the first frame. I also make sure that the smoke effect sprite is visible from the first frame. Also, the total length of the animation will be 0 0.6 seconds. It's really just all smoke. Now to play the animation, we go to the unhurt box area intact function, play the animation, and then wait till it has finished before we free the slime node. However, we also just need to add a new is dead boolean variable to the slime to specify that it's dead. And then in the physics process function, we return immediately if the slime is dead. Also remember to set the is dead variable to true in the unheard box error entered function. This way our death animation won't be interrupted so it can finish and the QFree function can be called correctly. <laughs> okay, uh, the slimes are now just little smoke clouds ready to explode when we hit them. To get our slimes back to how they should look, we need to remember to make the base sprite visible, the death effect sprite invisible, and also go to the reset animation and make sure that the base sprite is visible here and the death effect sprite invisible. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> this looks so much better. Now we can hit the slimes, and they will explode when slayed. This looks like a really good beginning for melee combat. But we have a few bugs we need to fix. First, we can sometimes hit the slimes even when we aren't using the sword. This seems a bit odd, but it's easy to fix. The problem is that while we do make our weapon invisible, we are actually not disabling it. So we are constantly running around with a sharp sword at our side, which the slimes can then run into. Poor little slimes. Okay, so to disable the sword correctly, we need to go to the sword scene and add a script to the root. Here, we add an enable and disable function. And we also need a reference to the sword's collision shape. In the enable function, we then set the shape's disabled property to false. And in the disable function, we set it to true. Back in the player script, we also need to add a script to the weapon node. Here we add a variable called weapon, and we want this to be an area 2D for now. We then create a ready function where we check if the weapon node has any children. And if this is the case, we assign the first child as the weapon. We also add enable and disable functions here. And in the enable function, we set the visibility to true 
and call the enable function on the weapon. And in the disable function, we set visibility to false and call the disable function on the weapon. For both functions, we also first check that there actually is a weapon. In the player script, we then replace the two lines where we set the weapon's visibility before, and then instead we call the enable and disable functions on the weapon. This fixed our first little bug. But, oh well, we still have more to do. Because even if we hit the slime, and it should be dead, we can still lose a heart if we get too close to the smoke. And well, that just doesn't feel right. So we also have to disable the slime's hitbox when it dies. We won't be switching it quickly on and off, so we can just use the hitbox monitorable property for this by setting it to false. However, when we test the game we get an error now can't change this state while flushing queries. Use call deferred or set deferred to change monitoring state instead. I won't go deeper into what is causing this now, but the error is so kind to give us the solution. We need to use set deferred to assign the variable. The set deferred function will wait until the end of the current frame to assign the variable. And now we are finally ready to test for the last time. We can now slay the enemies, they will disappear into smoke, we can only hit them when we are actually using the sword, and the smoke can't hurt us anymore. Now isn't this just fun? If you want to support my work on this channel, then one way you can do this is by supporting me on Patreon. And while we are on the topic, a huge thanks to all of you who already pledged. It really means a lot to me. Oh, and what about a new little assignment? Hmm... Can you add a knockback effect to the slime? when it is hit by the sword. You can find inspiration on how to do this in the player script, but I think you may want to change it a bit. And that's all for this episode. This will also be the last in this series for a while. There will be more episodes later, I promise, but I'm taking a small break from this series so I can focus on other video ideas as well. Some of them will also be useful if you're making a game like the one from this series. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye!